Benjamin, last August you wrote another great piece for Newsweek with the title, Woke Capital's Deathly China Addiction. Why do American companies continue to serve the Chinese Communist Party? It's really despicable and one of the more uh, dangerous entanglements that America has ever been engaged in in, in its history. Uh, woke capital broadly remains enthralled to communist China largely because of the purported promises of profits, access to a massive marketplace of you know, multiple billion people, 1.4 billion people. Uh, the Chinese Communist Party, of course, has attempted to at least purportedly, you know, cater to Western companies and the like, inviting in Western capital, expertise, technology, et cetera. And really, it's been one of the greatest ruses, one of the greatest influence operations ever played. Because unlike the Soviet Union, which was walled off from the West, China opened itself up to the West, and we opened ourselves up to Chinese influence. Consequently, we have underwritten the Chinese Communist Party's rise. We have armed it with technologies that pose an existential threat ultimately to this country. We have helped create our greatest adversary. And now our corporations in many respects find themselves in too deep. Their, their supply chains are deeply, deeply embedded in communist China. The, the Chinese government's policies, of course, uh, impact how American companies operate on the mainland and beyond, as we've seen in recent exposés, for example, about Apple and Amazon and others as well. And so consequently, we've given communist China a substantial amount of the power that ultimately imperils our survival as a free nation. And our ruling class, shamefully, I think, uh, not only remains in bed with communist China, in spite of the fact that it has not panned out really to the extent that it thought it would from the perspective of profits and rev growing revenues, et cetera, over the years, uh, but they increasingly seek to emulate it in terms of this drive for total power and use of technologies uh, against their political foes. So it has corrupted us, this relationship. It has empowered our worst adversary. And China has not become more like us as a consequence of engagement and integration. Our ruling class, sadly, has become more like the CCP. Yeah, there's no question. You had a, a, another article that was uh, March of last year. Biden administration, China ties reveal a dis deeper disturbing truth. And this goes back to our first topic. We knew this, or we should have known this, with the revelation of the Hunter Biden laptop. But we couldn't talk about it because they cracked down on our even mentioning the reality that Hunter Biden has sold out our country uh, with his father. Yeah, and, and the real story of Hunter Biden, and I, I've argued this the whole time, and you can see this in the joint report that was put out, led by Ron Johnson and Chuck Grassley in the Senate, which showed links, ties, coordination between Biden family members and among others, very senior Chinese officials, those tied to the Chinese PLA, the military, uh, and beyond strategically significant industries, including energy. Uh, of course, the financial benefits that Hunter Biden was able to accrue as an investor, clearly by dint of his father's position at the time he was vice president. But it's not about Hunter Biden at the end of the day or any of other Biden's, President Biden's other relatives. It's about the appearance, if not in actuality, the conflict of interest and corruption and potential compromise of the U.S. president by dint of his family's dealings with the greatest foreign adversary we face. And that is the story that gets obscured and obfuscated when people focus on salacious and sensational headlines about Hunter Biden. Yes, all of that is incredibly disturbing, but what's even more disturbing is how much that imperils our national security given who Hunter Biden's father is. And it's never addressed, and it ought to be hammered home every time. Every single time President Trump did anything that touched even remotely close to Russia, it was, well, he's compromised by Russia, a Russian agent, collusion, et cetera. How come every single China policy that, imp that Joe Biden touches or comes close to. The question isn't asked, how are your family's financial dealings with China impacting these policies? Not to mention the dealings, of course, of numerous senior administration officials, which I've chronicled in a series of pieces over the last couple of years. Yeah, well, and, and, and one of those um, things that they did early on was this private memo that exempted Chinese corporations listing in the United States from having to uh, abide by our accounting standards. Now, that's in, in process of being reversed. And, you know, obviously China can't raise money if they can't lie to us about the accounting. And when we demand that they give us truthful accounting, they just pull out. 
This, we have funded them to the tune of trillions of dollars of our capital funding their weapon system, and we've funded their slave labor initiatives with the Uyghurs. We've fund, funded their ability to monitor their people. We've funded their uh, human organ harvesting and all of those other threats. I think this is mass hypocrisy.